So I thought today I will bring you guys along and show you just quickly how I am going to take these old kitchen cabinets from our kitchen reno and repurpose them. It's free and it's actually a perfect size. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Come along. Do you ever have one of those weeks where you think there can't possibly be anything else that is gonna go wrong? It's kind of where we're at this week. We uh, we have had our septic system back up. We had a bit of a flood in the basement with our toilet. We have had the septic guy come out, plumber, no one could fix it. Finally, our friend was able to. Earlier this week, we unfortunately lost three of our guineas and our hen Rosie to a fox so it's been a hard week and it's it just seems like what is gonna happen next but uh, unfortunately we still have stuff that we have to get done so one of the things that has been on my list of stuff to get done this week was the chicken brooder our baby chicks are getting big and they're adorable but they definitely need more space so wood is super expensive right now with COVID and there's a huge shortage everywhere I've been calling they don't have any right now we're on a wait list for it so I started looking around the property and thought I've got old kitchen cabinets that I think I can change into a perfect chicken brooder and so that's what uh, we're gonna go do right now so yesterday Scott cut out the center pieces I'm just using um, two upper cabinets that were corner cabinets and they work perfect because they've got a nice base so that uh, the chips and everything don't go out but um, lots of ventilation and once we cut the center of the door out so he just used a Dremel saw max and cut the center piece of each of the kitchen doors out and now I'm going to line it with some chicken wire he also did the same thing on the top of the cabinet. So we just cut out um, a piece so that we can just get a bit more ventilation. So one of the things I love about using the kitchen cabinets is I can actually adjust it. So it already has the dividers in there for the shelves. So as the babies are tiny and we don't want them to have as much room, we can shrink it down and then depending on their size and how much space we need and how many chicks we have that time, we can actually make it bigger. Um, we're gonna cut out a piece in the center there so that they can move between, depending on how we have the uh, dividers. As you can see, some of the edging here is a little bit rough. So I'm just going to uh, quickly give it a sand just to smooth it out so that we can put on our chicken wire. To add some extra ventilation to the side, I am just going to draw a design and drill some holes just to let some air pass through. So I figured instead of just doing holes, I'll do a little design. So I just drew um, a little chick on the side and now I am just going to drill some holes and I got different um, drill bit sizes. battery is dying. <laughs> Definitely need to go get a new battery. So tip number one, always have another battery on hand charging.
All right, so this wasn't going exactly as I planned. It is a fail, so I'm now just going to cut a hole out. <laughs> we'll get this fixed up. So fail number two, I wanted to make sure that the pieces that were going to be side by side, the opening, were going to match. So I spent so much time measuring it out perfectly, not thinking about which way the cabinets were sitting on the ground. So one was actually backwards from what I needed it to be, and the opening ended up being upside down. So we just swapped the doors and which way the cabinets are going to go, but <laughs> the hole is still wrong. So now that we have everything cut, it's time to put on the chicken wire. So just measured the whole space and I'm giving myself a few inches extra just so that I have room to staple it to the door. And I'm going to use some tin snips. So when I'm cutting my uh, chicken wire, I'm just making sure along the edge, I'm leaving this slip so that I can bend it nicely. Otherwise, if you cut it down here, then it's all gonna unravel on you. So just leave a nice little lip. So I'm just going along and I'm just trimming off, if you can see these extra pieces here, or they'll be sharp sticking out. And I'm just doing it right at the bottom there. I just want the loose wires off. And then along this side, I just make sure, if you can see here, I just make sure that I'm cutting it so I've got this twisted part because that's a nice piece to staple through to. So I'm just snipping all of these loose wires off here. So after I'm done snipping the loose wires, I'm just gonna go along the edges and I'm just putting my fingers here and bending this down just to create a nice smooth edge with no sharp edges. So it's the next day and I've gone and gotten an electric stapler because the handheld one just wouldn't go through the kitchen cabinet. So we're just going to go ahead and attach all of the chicken wire and then we can get our brooder set up. Okay, attempt number two. What's happening here? Okay, so electric stapler, not good enough to go through this kitchen cabinet. So I am going to have to order uh, an air an air gun stapler. So back tomorrow. So this is take three. I've gone and got uh, an air gun that is a stapler. So this will finally work to attach the chicken wire to the door nice and securely. So that's it guys. It was pretty simple and pretty much done. I even found an Ikea towel rack in the basement that's not being used and it's going to double perfectly for a perch for the birds. 
And the last thing I have to do is I found some Tupperware lids that didn't have a bin to go with it and they were going to be heading to the garbage and they're going to work out perfect for trays in the bottom just to protect and make easy cleanup. And with some scrap wood I built a little ledge for them to have their water and food so that the shavings aren't constantly going in there. And I built a little perch for them as well on the other side. And they love it. So have a look around your place and get creative and see what you can turn into a chick brooder. Be sure to check out our other videos for the birth of our new baby foal and our baby chicks. And remember to hit subscribe, like, and the notification bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Barn Boots and Country Roots.